You make a house with blocks. How long has it been since you did this? A while? A few years. Okay, make me a house. Oh, here's a frog. I don't know what that's doing in there. The frog ate another frog. Want to see a pretty frog? I never bought that frog, so it's not mine. I don't know how it got in here. The uh, <laughs> uh, stories told sometimes about how uh, there was a church one time that, that had mice. Now, it doesn't have to be real extravagant, okay? Just, just, just a house. But the, there, was a, there was a church that had mice, okay? And these were not nice mice. They were not church mice that are nice and quiet. They were just doggone pests. And the church tried everything to get rid of them. And they called exterminators, they put mouse traps in, they put poison down, they did everything, but try as they might, they could not get rid of the mice. And so finally the uh, council of elders got together and had a meeting, and what they decided to do was they, they got all the mice together and baptized them and confirmed them, and then they never saw them again. <laughs> that makes a good joke, but it's not real funny with people, is it? We lose... An awful lot of people in modern day to who knows what. Modern philosophies, things that are taught in school. The pressure is great to abandon the Lord. The Bible's old-fashioned. And God is an old idea. It's a dusty old book, the Bible, that doesn't really have a lot of relevance for today. And lots of people cave in. And it starts pretty young. It really doesn't start with confirmation. Uh-oh, somebody's house isn't doing so good there. Give, give you a clue. The bigger the blocks, the better they are on the bottom, you know. The, um, so anyway, that's, that's good, though. That, that might help us a little bit here. So we got, we got some houses going. Uh, John's got some modern art there, architecture. Oh, look at that slanted roof. Okay. And an archway. Frank Lloyd Wright would be proud. So uh, we're having some houses made of blocks, and I'm going to go ahead and start. Whenever you all get tired of making a house, you can quit, okay? So if you want to build a good one, that's fine. If you want to keep on building while I speak, that's fine too, all right? We're going to have three houses. Uh, well, we might. I don't know if Olivia's ever going to get something that stands up. <laughs> it's been a long time since you played with blocks, hasn't it? <laughs> yes. So we're having here some houses made of blocks, and this represents something that we do every day, every single one of us. And of course, this sermon is meant for our confirmands, but there's something in this for all of us, because all of us are doing this. We're all putting together little building block houses. And these building block houses that we're putting together, it's our life. Every deed that we do, every word that we say, everything is a building block in the house of our life. And that's what we're constructing. That's what we spend our life doing, building a house for ourselves, the house of you. Every word that we say, every deed is a brick. It's a board. It's a nail. It's something that goes into that house that we're building. And so the big question, or a big question to ask, is what kind of building materials are you doing? What are your words like? Are they truthful? Are they kind? Are they wise and understanding? Are they thoughtful? Are deeds, are they, do we value integrity? Are deeds something we do out of love? Or on the other hand, is it something that we do and say to enhance our image? Something that makes us feel good, or just whatever we feel like doing, whatever pops into our head, and we don't really think about it at all. Selfish deeds, selfish words, things done maliciously are not very good building materials. There are crumbling bricks and rotten lumber, and you can't build a good house out of those. Olivia has finally discovered how to get a house to stand. And if we're wise, as the gospel said, if we listen to the words of Jesus, but not just listen, but do them, 
putting in them into practice, our house will stand. The house of our life will stand. What kind of house are you building? Let's think of the Ten Commandments. If you're done, just help yourself and go sit down. We'll just leave the box there for everybody to look at and the kids to play with later again. I'm sure they will. But with the Ten Commandments, and you know what they are probably, worship only one God. Don't make and bow down to idols. Don't misuse the Lord's name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and mother that it may go well with you. Paul said the first commandment with a promise. It may go well with you and you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not testify falsely against your neighbor and you shall not covet. When you follow these, you're using good materials. Good treated lumber, solid bricks. But if you're practicing adultery and drunkenness, drugs, crime, violence, if you dishonor one another, or if you're just simply not putting God first, you're not building wisely. You're using inferior materials. Your lumber is rotten. You're building a straw and paper. Or you might even be pulling bricks out of the house you've already built. What will happen in such a case? Your house is going to fall down, isn't it? It's not going to stay up very long. 1 Corinthians 3 said, By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames." And so what kind of materials we use is important. What kind of house are you building today? You've been laying a good foundation for your lives by going to church and going to Sunday school and to confirmation class. But as you know, being a Christian is more than just going to church. Keith Green said, going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. Something has to happen there. Even reading the Bible, something has to happen there. It has to lead you to Jesus. You have to ask Jesus into your heart. It's putting into practice what the Bible says. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord and don't do what I say? Being a Christian involves things like character, perseverance, integrity, morality, true religion, hard work, goodness, discipline. These kinds of things make the foundation for a good building. And without such things, we don't have much of a foundation. Or we're building a tower under the sky with no purpose. Like the Tower of Babel, which became a monument to stupidity and disobedience. Do you take time to put God in your life and virtues into your heart? Proverbs 9, 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's where we start. But we don't stop with that either. Peter tells us this. Make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten. He has been cleansed from his past sins. The building of his life will fall. What kind of house are you building today? This day, you who are being confirmed are to be congratulated. You've been faithful. You've worked hard to reach where you are. 
And in a couple of weeks, we can say the same things of our graduates. They've worked hard. They've completed a goal, a worthy goal. These are wonderful and notable milestones that we reach. But it's only a small part of your journey. It's as if you've completed one floor of a multi-story dwelling. Sir Christopher Wren is known for building St. Paul's Cathedral in London, a magnificent structure well known over the whole world for its uh, artistic design. Someone asked a worker one time as that was being built what he was doing. And one, the worker said, well, I'm laying bricks. And someone asked, he went and asked another worker what he was doing. And the second man said, I'm building a great cathedral for God. He had more in mind than just the individual task of that second, of that moment. He had a larger goal in mind. He had the purpose of the builder in mind. And so also with us, the more we focus on Christ, the more glorious will be the house that we're building, the house of our lives. In Colossians, Paul writes about focus and how our lives should be filled with purpose. Jesus, or Paul said, Since you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, for you died. Your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. A precious promise that all our efforts, our thoughts, our focus, when it's in the right place, will be rewarded. The building of your life, no matter what the milestone, it's not done yet. Where, your, where is your goal? What is your purpose? What kind of house are you building today? I want my house to be a place of beauty, a place of strength, a place of joy and peace and contentment. And above all, I want to be my, my house to be a place where God is pleased to dwell. That's what it's all about. In the children's sermon, we saw how God and people were moved far apart by sin. And you know, it doesn't make a lot of difference with papers on the floor, but when we sinned, you know, God didn't move. He's all God Almighty. He's the Holy One, the pure and perfect One. We're the ones that moved away from Him. But I want my house to be a place where God moves in, where we're close once again. What about you? What kind of house do you want to have? 1 Timothy 4, verse 7, Paul writes this, Discipline yourselves, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, prom holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Physical training is a wonderful thing. I, I love it. I, I swear by it. But when I die, it won't make any difference anymore. If I was physically fit, it will make a lick of difference in the graveyard. But how I train myself, the kind of house I've built throughout my life, that will make all the difference in the world. Discipline yourself, the Bible says, to do those things. Make every effort. In the Greek, the word is agonize to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, to make that straight and narrow way which Jesus outlined for us to walk on. Do those things which will enable the God of grace to work in your heart. When push comes to shove, we really can't do anything. We can't change our hearts. But we can do something to make God welcome there. And that's where those discipline comes in. And when we welcome God in our lives, He takes us and cleanses us he makes us whole. He changes us into the type of person He wants to be. And it's a joyful experience. And so remember to follow the example of the Christians in Acts 2, that verse we read. 
once they were repented, once they believed in Lord Jesus and were baptized, they continued in the apostles' teaching. That is, they studied their Bibles. They wanted to know what else God said. How do I live this life? They involved themselves with the church regularly, daily, in fact. They continued to worship. They gave generously and all those things that go into building your faith. If you continue in these types of things, if you continue to abide in Christ, you will indeed have a beautiful house in which the Lord will be pleased to dwell. May this be true of us the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's please sing.